Hey, hey, here's how you can instantly solo using these legend inspired fretboard hotspots. And in the next seven minutes, I'm gonna show you how to do that and how to move it to any key without even needing to understand it. You with me? All right, so let me show you these hotspots. We're gonna be in the key of A to start, okay? So the first hotspot is gonna be three, five on the uh, low E string. So third fret, fifth fret. And be sure to use your first and third fingers for these. Third fret, fifth fret, and then the same thing on the A string. Third fret, fifth fret. That's hotspot number one. Hotspot number two is gonna be fifth fret to seventh fret on the D string, and then fifth fret to seventh fret on the G string. So that's hotspot number two. And then hotspot number three is way up here, starting on the eighth fret on the B string, and then the 10th fret, and then eight to 10 on the high E string. So those are all three hotspots. We have hotspot one, hotspot two, and hotspot three. Okay, now let me show you each of the licks I played in the beginning of the video. Uh, the first one is gonna be in the first hotspot, and it goes like this. So what I'm doing is I'm walking up three, four, five on the low E string, and then three, five on the A string. And then when I get to the fifth fret on the A string, I roll my third finger back up to catch the fifth fret on the low E string, and then walk down five, four, three. So. Okay, that's lick number one. One more time. And then lick number two is a little bit faster, uh, and it's gonna be here in hotspot number two, and it goes like this. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm hammering on from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the D string, then picking the fifth fret on the uh, uh, G string, and then I'm gonna do a pull off from seven to five on the G string, and then I'm gonna grab the seventh fret of the D string, and then when I go back to the fifth fret on the D string, hammer back on to the seventh fret. So it's, and that repeats. All right, so it's like a cyclical kind of lick. Once we get to the second, you know, uh, runaround of it, we're going to do a quarter step, a little blues bend on the fifth fret of the G, uh, the G string, All right? Okay, and that's lick number two. Lick number three is gonna be up here uh, in the uh, third hot spot. So we start with uh, a little rest and then we're gonna go eight to 10. We're gonna hammer on on the B string, right? Then we're gonna play the eighth fret on the high E string. And then we're gonna do a full step bend and release starting on the 10th fret. So that means bending a full step, right? So we're gonna be bending from the 10th fret to the 12th fret in pitch, right? And then a release is when we hit that bend, we just bring it back down, but we keep sustaining the bend. So we have, right? And then we're gonna play the eighth fret of the high E string, right? Oh, sorry. All right, and then we're gonna do a pull off on the high E string from 10 to eight. And then uh, we're gonna end it with 10th fret on the B string. So we have, And there's a rest in the beginning. So if we were counting it like one, two, three, four, rest. So we're starting on beat two. So on beat one, we rest. One, two, three, four, one. All right, and that's look number three. So now let's talk about moving this across any key on the fretboard. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is memorize this. E, F, G, okay? E, F, G. Open low, uh, low E string is E, first fret F, third fret G, E, F, G. Do this a bunch of times so you'll never forget it. E, F, G, E, F, G. Next thing we're gonna do is move that up right here to A, B, C. So starting on the fifth fret is A, uh, seventh fret is B, eighth fret is C, A, B, C. So far we have E, F, G, A, B, C. And then finally we're gonna have D, which is the 10th fret on the low E string. So we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And then on the 12th fret where those two dots are, we have E and the pattern kind of starts over. We're just gonna focus up to the 12th fret for now because if you can name this, 
you can name you know the higher octave above. So we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and then E, right? So those are all of our main notes, but now let's talk about sharps and flats, okay? So when we went from E, F, G, there's a note in between here. So what that note is, is F sharp or G flat, right? E, F, F sharp, G. Whether it's sharp or flat will determine uh, based on the context of where you're going. If you're going up in pitch, you can call it sharp. If you're going down in pitch, you can call it flat. E, F, F sharp, G, or G, G flat, F, E, right? So F sharp and G flat are the same note. How you name them is dependent on what direction you're going, right? And then when we're going from G to A, right, to get to A, B, C, we have a, uh, a note in between here. So it's G, G sharp, A, right? And then now we're in A, B, C position. We have A, A sharp, B, and then C. And then from C to D, there's a note in between. So this will be C, C sharp to D, and then D sharp, and then E. And that's if we're going up. If we're going down, we have E, E flat, D, because we know that's D, right? D flat, C, because remember A, B, C, right? C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, right? So that's how you can name every single note on the fretboard starting on the low E string. And that's all you're going to need in order to use these hotspots and adapt them to any key. So for a quick recap, right? If we're moving up uh, for the in-between notes, they're sharp. If we're moving down, they're flat. So I'm going to move up and then down, and uh, you'll see how the notes are, are laid out. So we have E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Then moving down, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E. So if we wanted to move this to any key, all we would have to do is take uh, the pentatonic pattern, right? And then with the starting note, move that to any note on the low E string. And then that can be our reference point for the key. And then we just create the hotspots around it. So now that I've given you a crash course of these hotspots and how to find every musical key just by using the low E string, let's put these hotspot licks to the test. I'm gonna pull up a backing track in the key of A, play these licks for you, and we can see how cool they sound. And then afterwards, I'll show you how to adapt them to any musical key you want. So right there, I was cycling through the licks over the backing track, and you may have noticed I got a little creative. What I started doing was taking the same licks and putting them in different hotspots, right? Because, fun fact, each of these, each of the notes in these hotspots are actually the same notes, just in different octaves, right? So I can take the same lick, like, like lick number one, for example, and play it across the other hotspots. And when that happens, that's using a system I like to call the three for one octave system, where we basically have one lick and then we can play it in three different octaves and essentially turn it into three licks. So let's see with lick number two, for example. Lick number two we had. You can absolutely play this over all of the hotspots. All right, lick number three, same story. Um, So over the backing track, I was just sticking to those hot spots and just going through the different licks that I felt like playing. Some of them worked better than others, but that's part of the whole process is kind of finding out what uh, licks and, and series of notes and stuff pop out the most 
and then keeping those in your back pocket. So when you're at a jam or when you're playing to other backing tracks and stuff, you're really pulling out great ideas that you know are going to sound killer. And now let's talk about how to find these hotspots in any key. So we've gone over the entire musical alphabet, including the sharps and flats, just on the low string alone, and that's all we're going to need. So when we first learn these in the key of A, right, we have the pentatonic pattern, right? That starts on the fifth fret of the low E string. That note is A, right? Remember, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? There's A. So these hot spots are all positioned right in the neighborhood of that pentatonic scale. So hot spot number one, like right next to it, right? Hot spot number two, literally smack dab in the middle of it, right? And then hot spot number three, is just further up right next to it. So each of these hot spots are connected to the pentatonic scale. And with that knowledge in mind, we can now move the pentatonic pattern to any note starting on the low E string to change it to any key. So let's pick the key of C, for example, right? Remember, E, F, G, A, D, C. Boom, we already have C. We can find that pretty quickly without having to go through each note one at a time, right? So C is right there. So if that's the note, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the minor pentatonic pattern right starting on C. Okay, that's our ultimate reference point. And each of these hotspots, remember, are connected to the pentatonic scale. So we have hotspot number one, right, which is right before it. All right, hotspot number two, which is right on top of it or in the middle of it. And then hotspot number three, which is right after it. All right, so we've taken the same thing, the same idea, and just moved it to a new key. We're now in the key of C. So I can play through those licks if I wanted to. Let's see. And now I've applied them to the key of C. Just for fun, let's pick a key that's a little bit harder to find. Let's pick um, G sharp. All right. So we already know E, F, G. All right. So if it's G sharp, that means it's related to G, but it just is sharp, right? So if we start with G and we move it up one fret, right? Remember when we're going up, that's how we find the sharp. The fourth fret here on the low E string is G sharp. It's also A flat, right? If you're starting from A, moving down, it's A flat. So G sharp, A flat, same note. But since I said G sharp, we start with G, then move it up to find G sharp, okay? So now we play the pentatonic scale in, like starting on G sharp. Okay, that's our reference point. Now for the hot boxes, right? The hot spots, we have the first one. All right, it's the second one. The third one. All right, so we can play those licks, same thing. So we've taken those same licks and we've adapted them now to the key of G sharp. Now that you know this stuff, the next thing that you're going to do is quiz yourself, okay? Just pick a random key, use the system that we learned, find the note on the low E string, play through the pentatonic pattern, and then find the hot boxes, right? Get visually that pattern down and then play out those licks. And then now you're in a new key. So we've gone over ways that you can start soloing super fast and adapt them to any musical key you can think of. And this is just one step forward on your journey to playing guitar like a pro. Believe me, it gets even better from here because I got something for you. A free blue solo heat map. This has helped Thousands of guitar players play blazing hot blues solos all over the neck, just like the pros do. So click here to claim your copy or check the link in the description box. If you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell notification icon. And also check out our other kick-ass lessons right over here. I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.